more humidity is anticipating. The, the key here is how light the wind is. It is calm, it's stagnant, and that means with a lot of that surface ozone that will build up during our commutes, the morning commute, and especially for the afternoon commute, that poor pollution and the ozone that will be developing at the surface just cannot mix around. So unfortunately, we are once again in, a, in an air quality alert, that orange alert. So that means we've got unhealthy air for sensitive groups, something to keep in mind while you're planning out your day today. 66 degrees downtown. We're at 63 Lee Summit in Paola. Looks like Lawrence has dropped to 58. That feels rather refreshing. 58 in Carrollton, Marshall 55 degrees, one of the cooler spots there in Clinton, Missouri. So clear and quiet skies here in Kansas. Kansas and Missouri, but we've got some thunderstorms that we'll be tracking. This has been kind of the zone of severe weather the last 24 hours from Arkansas back through Georgia, parts of the panhandle of Florida. Then we're going to be monitoring our chair or today's chance of thunderstorms. It will not be in our area, but it will clip southwestern Kansas. So this low pressure area storm system is going to really result in some more active weather, especially towards Oklahoma City, central Oklahoma and western Oklahoma today. Again, no storms in our forecast, and if the air quality isn't too much of a concern for you today, that pool forecast might be exactly where you want to where you want to find yourself. Upper 80s for high temperatures this afternoon, and it's so much warmer. We're back to that summertime heat and summertime humidity. After today and tomorrow with the upper 80s, we've got some changes to talk about this weekend, and that's when thunderstorms are back in the forecast. So I wanted to break it down for you here at 2 o'clock Saturday. We've We've got maybe some spotty showers and thunderstorms. I think most of that will stay north of I-70. The main line is coming in between 7 and 10 p.m. on Saturday evening. You can see that leading edge right in here is likely where we're going to get some more of the severe storms, but we're on that northern edge where we could absolutely get a few storms capable of producing some high wind and really heavy rain. And luckily that heavy rain is falling over areas that desperately need it in central Missouri. So we'll be watching that Saturday lingering into Sunday morning. Temperatures cooler there on Sunday at 80, but then we jump near 90 degrees for several days next week. Lindsay, thank you. A new lawsuit claiming Oceans of Fun and its parent company hired inexperienced lifeguards and were negligent with training, leading to the death of a six year old girl. Adeline Stewart went underwater while swimming in the Coconut Cove area last July. The lawsuit says it took several minutes for lifeguards to pull her out of the water and immediate first aid was also delayed. She died four days later at Children's Mercy Hospital. We reached out to Oceans of Fun and Cedar Fair, the parent company, about the lawsuit but haven't heard back yet. Since her death, the park has made safety improvements, including new life jacket rules in Coconut Cove Pool and requiring supervision for children under three feet, six inches tall. Meanwhile, police have identified the victim in a shooting at 74th and College in Kansas City, Missouri. Jariah H. Cockrell was found inside a house, shot and killed around 830 yesterday morning. Officers took a person of interest into custody. Investigators are looking into what led up to this shooting. Now, in light of recent violence, volunteers with Casey Mothers in Charge canvassed at 55th and Prospect on Wednesday. <laughs> KCPD homicide analysis shows more than 80 homicides so far this year. Rosalind Temple, the founder and program director of KC Mothers in Charge, urges people with information to come forward. Work with the police department. They're here to serve and protect our community. They have a job. We as a community, we take a sworn oath and do better. Now, the city partners with groups like Casey Mothers in Charge to try and prevent crime. They get together to try and work together. On Jackson County Sheriff's Office also stepping in to try and help. They offer to help with patrol and investigations. I want to change the structure so we can do a little bit more in helping uh, Kansas City. Uh, most of the homicides that occur in Kansas City happen in eastern Kansas City right next to uh, Blue Summit, uh, East Patrol Division. So we don't want that creeping over in our area. So we spoke to some neighbors in the area about adding more resources to the east side. Because we start to see everybody have guns, everybody shooting everywhere, every time. I think it's raised what we need. Kansas City crime and this area getting any more crime, then I would say that I'm for it. As long as it just don't make my area any more difficult to get a sheriff here. KCPD has not yet shared how they believe the partnership will work, while the Jackson County Sheriff says that he's moving other resources from different departments to the county to help out, and it's not expecting a loss of service. 
Former President Donald Trump cashing in after being federally indicted. He says he raised $7 million for his 2024 presidential campaign over the past week. $4 million came from digital fundraising. $2 million raised at a donor event on Tuesday night. That was the same day he pleaded not guilty to 37 federal crimes. Prosecutors accuse him of illegally keeping classified documents after leaving the White House. A New Jersey jury is ordering Starbucks to pay nearly $26 million to a former employee. An ex-manager claimed that the company unfairly punished her and other white employees after the high-profile arrest of two black men. Back in 2018, a Philadelphia store manager asked them to leave because they weren't ordering anything. Now, when they refused, the police were called and escorted them out. But it turned out the men were just waiting for a business associate. So the case sparked national backlash. And the ex-manager claims that Starbucks punished her and other white employees to improve their image. She was later fired and jurors believed race was a factor in her dismissal. 520 this morning, the PGA Tour commissioner is taking a leave of absence. The organization says that Jay Monahan recovering from a medical condition and will be out for an unspecified amount of time. This, of course, comes just a few days after the PGA announced that deal with Saudi backed Live Golf. The agreement promoted criticism and some athlete, athletes from some athletes and lawmakers. PGA Tour says other executives will lead day to day operations in Monaghan's absence. This also happening as the U.S. Open begins today in Los Angeles. The Kansas City Current coming off a Big Cup Challenge win on Wednesday. They beat the Chicago Red Stars 4-0 on Wednesday. And those four goals all came in the second half and all came within about 15 minutes of real time from each other. It was just rapid fire at that point last night. And I had a chance to go and get the game started last night. Hard to hey, hear there. You it. Thank you. Yeah, hard to yeah, hear. I said <laughs> the hardest part of my job is getting up at 220 something every morning. Yep. The easiest part is being with you here tonight Aww. is what I said. So, but yeah, wow. it, it happened really fast. They said, yeah. you've got about 20 seconds to do this. Oh, and I was good. like, okay, let's I'm go. You know, it was, it was awesome. My son Tanner was there with me. He originally said, dad, I want to say it. Right. I was like, yeah, great. And we walked down. He said, Dad, I'm just going to stand. Yeah, never, no, you. <laughs> you go for it. No, it's cool. It's cool. What a core memory. So How much awesome. fun. So, so much. Uh, and thanks to the current for having me out tonight. Absolutely. And then to have a win for nothing like that was okay, a lot of fun. Hey, can't beat day. that. So this year, Athena FC will make its debut on the soccer field. They're a youth club focused on elevating female players and developing women on and off the field. They're also offering mental health resources. KSHB 41 News reporter Danielle Leon is live at Johnson County Community College, where the team will be practicing later on this year. Daniela, tell us all about this, and is it too late to join? Hey, good morning, Deja and Taylor. Well, right now the soccer facilities are currently closed this morning, but this is where Athena FC will be holding practice later on this year. Now tryouts were held last week, but it's not too late to join in on the action. Now the club was started by JC Knapp, who felt like a lot of attention, resources, and even press coverage were solely focused on male club teams. And that is where Athena FC steps in. They're part of the Hardland Soccer Association, which is the largest soccer league in the U.S. Their goal is to cultivate strong leaders on and off the field and have a strong impact within their community. Sign-ups are in full swing, shirts have been handed out, and soccer balls are ready to go for Athena FC tryouts. Scoring goals and playing with my friends. But the focus of this club goes beyond scoring goals. Future players will form part of a club where female needs, mental health support, and encouragement take center stage. So all the staff, women in the community that have grown up playing sports and kind of can help develop that next level for the, for the females. The club was started by JC Knapp after noticing there was a lack of resources and attention to female athletes. He says the goal isn't to just learn soccer. A mental performance director will be on the team's sideline to offer support. Soccer is important, that's why we're here. But if we can just enable these young ladies with a strong mental uh, attitude, I think it treats them well in life. And to parents, Athena FC is a game changer and a chance for their daughters to score big. A new endeavor for everybody and for the, the team and the league. And I am excited to see what it does for Kansas City. It's new, but it's paving the future of female sports. Making them know that 
they're, they're seen in their herd, right? Because so many often times you see the club teams putting all the focus on the guys. And building the confidence of future champions. The World Cup, I like, I like to watch. The, I'm going to watch the girls' World Cup. Now, I asked JC Knapp where he envisions Athena FC Club to be within the next 10 years. He eventually wants to have his own facilities, wants to expand his club and become one of the most impactful clubs in all of the metro. Reporting in Johnson County, I'm Danielle Leon, KSHB 41 News. Back to you guys. Oh, my goodness. I love that. Daniela, before we let you go, tell us how does the club plan on incorporating that mental health aspect within the team? Yeah, well, they will have mental health staff at practice, at select practices here at JCC to kind of talk to players and talk with them about adversity, some of the challenges that they're currently facing and really normalize the conversation surrounding mental health. All right, Daniela, thank you so much. Well, it is time for your weekend fun with 41 this week. We've got parades, festival celebrations, starting off with a couple of Juneteenth events. First, the 2023 Juneteenth Overland Park Parade is going down this Saturday from 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Prairie Fire. I will be the Grand Marshal of this what? free event, and I cannot wait to see you there. You can expect performances, not from me, vendors, and so much more. The third annual Juneteenth Freedom Celebration also happening this Saturday from 4 to 7 p.m. at Harmon Park in Prairie Village. So there's going to be bounce houses, face painting, some games, so much more. That's also free to attend. Next up, the Kansas City Zoo is hosting Friday Flamingo, and it's happening tomorrow from 5 to 9 p.m. So these 21 and up events allow you to experience the zoo and its animals while enjoying some music and food and drinks and go around and look at all the animals while you do so. Strike a pose with the flamingos, feed the camels, all that good stuff. Tickets range between $20 and $50 per ticket. Flamingo is a great name. Flamingo is amazing. And last but not least, the Midwest Fest at High V Arena tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. You can take part in the largest gaming event in Kansas City. Esport tournaments, dozens of exhibitors and local and national brands coming together. Gaming influencers. It's just going to be a whole lot of fun for you gamers out there. You can expect so much fun. $40 per person, 12 and under are free. So lots of going on. Yeah. Lots and of once stuff again, going you're on. emceeing something every I'm weekend. I'm grand you get marshalling, so it is a little easier. So you just get to sit in a car and wave. Yes, I just get to do a little pretty. I love it. It'll be great. <laughs> It'll be great. I'm going to be How's so happy. How's it this weekend, you think, during these parades? Yeah, and such? It, honestly, okay. during the day Saturday, we'll be okay, but thunderstorms okay. increase in the evening and in and, and overnight hours, and some of the storms may be on the strong side. I'm going to explain what areas to watch for on that next. And President Biden works to take away hidden or surprise fees the next time you go to check out. So at 530, we'll tell you about the next steps that he's taking to make prices more transparent. An organization called Charlie's House here in Kansas City working to keep kids safe inside their own homes. At 534, they share a message for dads ahead of Father's Day. News as we switch over to 530 this morning, Miriam PD says the intersection of Shawnee Mission Parkway and Antioch still closed this morning. There was a crash there overnight. Police have not released a lot of details about what happened there, just that that intersection is closed. We'll update you when we learn more. This is right near wherever you turn to go to Ikea if you're coming down Shawnee Mission Parkway, so just be very aware of that closure this morning. Yeah, absolutely. And new this morning, President Biden makes a big step toward removing hidden costs and surprise fees that companies may sneak in when you go to check out. Yeah, he wants to make the shopping experience better for customers by making prices more transparent. So the president plans to meet with several companies today to try and come up with an answer. And some of those companies include Live Nation, SeatGeek, Airbnb, the Newport Festivals Foundation, and others as well. Now, during the State of the Union address in February, Biden called out junk fees. And since then, Live Nation announced that it plans to roll out an upfront all-in pricing experience in September. Live Nation owns over 200 venues and festivals all across the country. Ticketmaster also plans to add an all pricing feature as well. So he's meeting with those companies today and we'll continue to keep you updated on the progress of that. Looking out at Kansas City this morning as we approach sunrise at 531, 60 degrees outside, a really nice start to your day. Meteorologist Lindsay Anderson here with us this morning. And Lindsay, you told us yesterday it was going to be just a little bit more humider yesterday, and it turned out to be more humider <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, you felt you felt kind of that increase. Yeah. You were really going to notice a bit more today, okay? More okay. humidity, way more heat. We're back to June, basically, everybody. That break was nice. It was short-lived for sure. 61 degrees at KCI right now. Feel Feels pretty great. Those dew points upper 50s, not bad, but again, that's going to change as we go through the afternoon. This is what I want you to look at. The wind 
completely calm, completely light. And because of that stagnant air, we've got an ozone alert for you here in the Kansas City Metro. So once again, it's just going to be a tough day for extra exertion or vigorous exercise outside for those that are a little bit more sensitive to that pollution close to the ground. 64 in Overland Park right now, 63 Independence and Blue Springs. 83 by lunch might be OK to get the dog walked by lunchtime in the afternoon with more cars driving around that extra pollution with the stagnant air. I think it might be a little bit tough for for the exercise in the afternoon. 88 is also that high temperature this afternoon. We're going to talk about when cooler air makes a comeback. That's all next Asia. All right, sounds great, Lens. Thank you so much. Getting you out the door this morning. Traffic looks good. It's pretty quiet in terms of there are no crashes, no major issues to let you know about. So our overall wide view map looks great. It's nice and clear. So I wanted to bring in a couple of scout cameras so you can get an idea of traffic flow. As I mentioned, not too many vehicles out there and no major issues. But if that changes, I'll be here to keep you updated. Taylor. Did you thank you 532 this morning? A Jackson County man says his proposed property tax jumped almost $2,000 and he's not the only one. You can see all these people at the county assessor's office on Wednesday to get answers. One official told us that property values are so high because of the booming real estate market. I had planned on living here, living out my life here, but at over $4,000 in taxes in a year, um, it's going to make it difficult. I don't have any problem paying my fair share, but this isn't fair at all. So if you plan to appeal your assessment, don't forget to bring documents like photos, appraisals, closing statements, repair bills for your home. You have until July the 10th to challenge your assessment. You can go in person. You are encouraged to make an appointment, though, so you can also call or go online. All that information for you is on our website right now, KSHB.com. Just look for this story. Today, Kansas City's new rules for short-term rentals will go into effect. The City Council passed ordinances back in May, changing where new rentals can operate and how many are allowed in certain areas. So a judge denied a temporary restraining order against the ordinances. It stems from a lawsuit we told you about earlier this week. A group of short-term rental owners want the city to process applications under the old ordinance and send the new ones back to the City Council for revisions. If I don't have these, I go back to cleaning houses. That's what I did before this, was I cleaned other people's toilets. Um, it's not a bad job, but it's hard work. And in my 50s, it's getting harder. Those behind the lawsuit say they still plan to pursue legal action. Again, those new rules go into effect today. Hey, it's a uh, Father's Day weekend. Is it really? Just just putting that out there. One organization pushing a powerful <laughs> message. So fathers, make sure their families are safe. Dad, we know that is the thing that you want to do most for your family. It's really important this weekend. Absolutely. So our Caroline Hogan visited Charlie's house to learn a little bit more. Here at Charlie's house, their goal is to keep kids safe. And with Father's Day, they want to make that a message for fathers to remember how to use safety equipment in their houses. So joining for me today is Brett Horn. He's with Charlie's house who lost his son to a dresser tip over almost two decades ago. Can you tell me a little bit about the dresser and how exactly this can hurt a kid, but then also making sure that this doesn't happen again? Absolutely. Well, oftentimes the reason these uh, accidents are happening are because multiple drawers are pulled open on a dresser and uh, kids apply pressure or force upon that drawer. And so what we want to make sure we do is apply an anchor to every single dresser unit. Here is one right here that's featured here. What, uh, what we ask you to do is anchor your furniture to the wall. It's a very important step. Very important, and it doesn't have to be a dresser this tall. It can be something even shorter, as short as this guy right here. That's a very important message for what we're trying to convey today. The dresser which uh, killed Charlie was only 30 inches high. Even dressers as short as this nightstand looking uh, um, unit need to be secured to the wall. And it's important right now, especially during Father's Day, to remember these things just because every year they come around, you want to make sure they're up to date, right? Absolutely. Every year on Father's Day, remember to anchor your furniture. It's a great message to keep. Reporting in Kansas City, Caroline Hogan, KSHB 41 News. Uh, such good tips there. And they worked so hard to get that safety sample house built right. over the last few years. I've had the opportunity to MC a couple of different events for them, fundraising events. That was really a long time passion project for them to get it done. And they really hope that people can come and visit. And remember that this weekend, go home and check your house. Absolutely. Well, still to come here on KSHB 41 News, we introduce you to a passionate man of who is building a model of the old municipal stadium. The Royals, Chiefs, Monarchs all played there, and we'll show you his project at 552.
Speaking of the boys in blue, it's been rough this year, and now they'll be without some key players due to more injuries. That's coming up at 554. And a live look outside this Thursday morning, 60 degrees, a live look at the K. We'll be right back after this break. I'm taking us on another one tank trip. So they I'm going to be thrilled. showing you how much fun you can have at Green Meadows Alpaca Ranch in Holden, Missouri. You are not going to want to miss this fun trip. They, they looked really <laughs> thrilled you were there to see them. Were they, they, were, were they, they were so excited. I'm, I don't want to give anything Asia. away. Okay. I don't want to <laughs> give anything away, but they were a little bit hot. And we had to cool them down. Is it a good time to visit a ranch <laughs> or is it going to rain? <laughs> Can't wait to see how that happens. <laughs> the alpaca cooling process. Yes. We're going to yeah. get to see Tell us the through. alpaca forecast. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I got. I, I, I look out for yeah, the alpaca picnic. I look out for all the humans and the alpacas out there every day. Always. Uh, guys, we've got, I wanted to show you kind of the drought issues out there this morning. We've got some extreme drought level. This is level four out of five. That's for locations here in central Missouri, but it includes cities like Warrensburg, Sedalia through Columbia and Jefferson City. Luckily, this weekend does introduce a decent chance of rain and thunderstorms. I know we don't want it on the weekend. Luckily, most of the activity, though, is coming in Saturday evening, Saturday night into Sunday morning. So you're Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon plans should be okay and should be spared. We'll have details. I've got the planner on that here next. Lindsay, thank you. A complication last month delayed the opening of the Zambezi Zinger roller coaster at Worlds of Fun at 551. An update on the new timeline for it to open. And former President Donald Trump is still leading the other GOP candidates despite recent legal challenges. At 546, we'll tell you how Trump's competition is trying to convince his voters to switch sides. Forty-one news today. Almost 545 on your Thursday morning. Top stories we're following today. President Biden planning to meet with several companies to help come up with a solution for what he calls junk fees. Those are the hidden costs and surprise fees that companies may sneak in when you go to check out online. Biden is meeting with several companies today to help come up with a solution. Some of those companies include Live Nation, SeatGeek, Airbnb, and the Newport Festivals Foundation, as well as some others. So we'll keep you updated on what we find out. New rules for short-term rentals in Kansas City go into effect today. Those new ordinances passed in May by the City Council. This will change where new rentals can operate and how many are allowed in certain areas. And this morning, Children's Mercy Hospital is announcing a five-year initiative to address the pediatric mental health crisis. The hospital says 15 million children are in need of mental health services, but only 30 to 40 percent actually receive care. So they plan to share several strategies and projects and announce a multi-million dollar investment that will help impact more than 80,000 kids right here in Kansas City. Well, while many Republicans continue to support former President Donald Trump amidst his legal woes, some who are gunning for his former job are now walking a tightrope. NBC's Bree Jackson explains how they're criticizing Trump while trying not to alienate his huge group of voters. As former President Donald Trump awaits trial, accused of mishandling classified documents and hiding them from investigators, the Republicans vying for the party's presidential nomination are trying to find the right path to convince his voters they offer a better choice. So far, their pitches are offering gentle criticism. I can't defend what is alleged, but uh, the former president has a right uh, to his day in court. To full-on condemnation of Mr. Trump's actions. It's reckless. It's harmful to, the, to American national security, and it doesn't show the kind of judgment that you need to be an effective president. Right now, Donald Trump's not going to be able to win in a November election, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. To forgiveness. I would be inclined in favor of a pardon. The former president maintaining his sizable lead despite being indicted twice, with more indictments potentially on the horizon. Never before have the two standards of justice in our country been more starkly revealed. Mr. Trump and his allies continued to attack the Justice Department and Special Counsel Jack Smith, who was appointed to investigate the classified documents case and the former president's role in the January 6th insurrection. When I appointed uh, Mr. Smith, I did so because it underscores the Justice Department's commitment to both independence and accountability. In brief comments about the Trump indictment, Merrick Garland said prosecutors would do their talking through their court filings. Chris Pallone, NBC News, Washington. The former president contends his prosecution is a boon to his campaign. He's claimed to have raised more than $6 million since the charges were first unsealed late last week. 
Here's your latest Kansas City forecast from meteorologist Lindsay Anderson. Just clicked over to 547 this morning and temperatures are off to a really nice start. Once again, we are in the low 60s outside dew points still barely hanging on to the 50s. It's makes it feel pretty refreshing out there. One thing you should note are those winds. It's very calm outside and because of that, we're talking stagnant air today, not really able to mix around that pollution. Once it interacts with sunlight, we get ozone creation at the surface. This does result in some unhealthy air for sensitive groups. OK, so just keep that in mind for any outdoor plans that you may have today or, or just kind of planning out your afternoon. 63 in Lee Summit right now, 66 downtown, 62 Cameron. We are 55 though in Clinton, 56 in Lawrence and 50 59 at Garnett, finding some really nice, cool uh, temperatures this morning in a few locations, but we're all going to warm up so quickly today. Not a bad pool day if you're comfortable in, in the air outside. We are in the upper 80s out there with a high UV index. I expect wall to wall sunshine today and 90s possible for a few select cities like downtown St. Joseph, maybe even Chillicothe 90 that high in Lawrence today. So definitely back to that summer feel more heat, more humidity is going to build through the next couple of days. Saturday high temperature not as warm. We're at 86 because we're going to introduce a chance of some evening and nighttime thunderstorms. And with that on Saturday, this is actually should say Saturday. We've got a risk of some of those storms that might just clip a few strong storms that might clip our southern counties. Let me explain here on our future cast because we'll watch out west with this disturbance approaching. 2 p.m. on Saturday, there might be a couple showers that try to form right now. It looks to be mainly for locations in northern Missouri. It's going to ramp up closer to about 7, 8, 9 p.m. The main line of concern is right here between Topeka, Wichita, and Tulsa.